This is Twit. So web censorship watchdog grapefire.org reports that the Chinese government is intercepting connections to Apple's iCloud from China, pointing users instead to a site that appears to be spoofing iCloud login page. So the attack seems to be timed to coincide with the launch of iPhone 6 sales in China. And here to tell us more about the story is Russell Brandom of The Verge. Hi, Russell. How are you? Hi, great to be here. Welcome. Welcome. So can you tell us a little bit more about who greatfire.org is and, and how reliable this information is? Yeah, so they have been, uh, they're one of the preeminent groups, I think, looking at web censorship in China. Great Fire is a play on the Great Firewall, which is uh, the Chinese uh, apparatus for web surveillance uh, and censorship. Yeah, so they, they've been at the front of a lot of different stories. There was for a while an issue with Skype. There was a sort of Chinese knockoff Tom Skype that was co cooperating with Skype and you weren't sort of sure which one you were using. Uh, and they really took the lead on that and they've taken a, a lead on a lot of the which terms are censored and, and sort of what the alerts are. So I think they're a very reliable source for this. And as I, I was sort of mentioning this before, they, they backed up the report with a lot of hard evidence. So they've got trace routes. You can see, you can sort of follow the the traffic from place to place and see exactly where it was redirected. So if you're, you know, technically capable on these things, you don't have to take their word for it. You can really see it happening. Russell, you characterize this as a man in the middle attack. What exactly is happening? Yeah. So, I mean, the man in the middle attack, uh, literally, you know, if you're in Shanghai and iCloud is, you know, wherever it's being hosted, the firewall is in the middle. So the man in the middle is, telling you he's sending you to iCloud, but really he's sending you somewhere else. And the question is, how can you tell whether it's the real iCloud or whether it's not the real iCloud? Now, there is a way to do this. HTTPS, those protections, which is a little green lock you see uh, to the left of your URL bar, um, and, and iCloud uses that. And that's why if you were using Chrome or Firefox, you know, even in Shanghai trying to get to iCloud, you saw a warning that said, you know, hey, wait a minute, this isn't iCloud, this is some other thing. But the problem is because it's the Chinese government, they've uh, encouraged, I would say, a lot of Chinese-made browsers, particularly Kihu, which is the most popular browser in China, to not display those warnings. So if you were using Kihu, and that's, you know, millions of people who were, who were uh, approaching iCloud that way, you didn't see a warning and you got routed straight to this fake iCloud site. So is using Firefox or Chrome sort of the answer for anybody who generally wants to avoid these types of attacks, whether it's on Microsoft or Apple or, or anyone else? Is that a best practice for anyone in China? Absolutely. I would say, you know, Chrome and Firefox are definitely uh, at the forefront of security on this. I would say also, I mean, iCloud does use, use HTTPS because they're, you know, sending you files and, and there's a lot of sensitive data. There's a big movement afoot uh, to get more sites to use HTTPS, uh, particularly journalistic output, uh, uh, journalistic outlets, and, and sort of anyone who is potentially, you know, sites are less secure if they're using HTTP. And so one of the things we saw recently is Google said that they would give a search ranking boost, uh, a pretty small one, but still, uh, to any site using HTTPS. So if I'm looking for something and there's an HTTP, HTTPS site that's going to give it to me, I should probably get it from there. So greatfire.org is reporting that this is also happening to Microsoft. The live login page is also being hijacked. In yes. both cases, you'll get what looks like a genuine login page with, with warning or without a warning. You'll get a genuine login page. What happens to a Chinese user who then logs into iCloud through that page or logs into live.com through that page? Yeah, so... The man in the middle attack means, you know, once you do that, they can just send you on to iCloud or login.live. But because you weren't sending it to directly to iCloud and there was a person in the middle, they now have your login and password. So uh. if they want to make it seamless and say, OK, we're just, you know, once you've done that, we'll log you into iCloud and, and sort of send you along on your way, they can do that which is part of what makes the attack so troubling. And you would never know that, you know, suddenly now whoever was behind this has, you know, the login. They can log into your account anytime they want. So how is Apple responding to this? Or are they responding to it? Are they just kind of letting everything settle out on its own? Well, I mean, I think they're being quiet so far. We haven't had an official statement uh, that I have seen. I think 
it's very politically delicate for them. We remember sort of Google's complicated relationship with China before where you want to be in this market both because, you know, it's it's sort of a, a large and lucrative marketplace for Apple. They're selling 20 million uh, units of the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus at last count. Uh, I actually think we're getting the official figures later today, so that'll be a good thing to watch for. But also, I mean, Apple has stepped up their encryption efforts, and it is important, especially for users in China, to have access to phones with encryption that hasn't been you know, circumvented by the Chinese government, possibly. So I think in many cases, certainly, and I think Google felt this also, you want to kind of give the people their access to your products because you believe in what you're doing, but that also means playing ball with the Chinese government and not, you know, when something like this happens, it's very hard for a company like that to come out and say, you know, how dare you? This is completely unacceptable. Like you're targeting our users. This is awful. Um, I think I, I think Apple is very cautious about making that announcement and sort of antagonizing the Chinese government. So the presumption is that basically this is the Chinese government using yeah. the Great Firewall to get people's logins to iCloud for use later to keep an eye on what they're up to. Yeah, essentially. I mean, it would be very difficult for anyone other than the Chinese government to do this. We don't know who within, like, if there was maybe it's some rogue faction, but whoever it is, they have very extensive access to the Chinese telecom infrastructure. So it's hard to imagine it's anyone other than the government. Now, we don't know why they're doing it. It's sort of an indiscriminate attack. So maybe it's just they're going to keep these things on file for later. Maybe there's someone specifically they're looking for. We, we really don't know a lot about the why. Mostly what we know is the how. Right. Very interesting. Thank you, Russell. Russell Brandom, he's a reporter for The Verge. You'll follow him on Twitter at Russell Brandom with an M. Uh, and uh, we appreciate your, uh, your help. Yeah, thanks for having me. Take care, Russell.